dropping corruption charges against former crime intelligence boss Richard Mbluli was the right call. Well, that's what happened. Suspended, rather, prosecutor Lawrence Mukwebu told the Mukhoro inquiry yesterday. Now, he also testified about his involvement in several high-profile cases. Well, he'll again be cross-examined next week, and tomorrow the inquiry will hear from suspended deputy prosecution's boss Namkobo Jiba. Well, the commission is probing the fitness of both Mukwebi and Jiba to hold office. Now, colleague Govan Whittles has been following that inquiry for us. Govan, a very good morning to you. So just recap for us what it is that we heard from Lawrence Mkwebi in his defense. Well, Yuveka, most of what uh, Lawrence Mkwebi was talking about was essentially uh, reiterating his position that he took the correct decision. Um, and yesterday when he appeared on the stand for the first time to give his side of the story, he essentially took uh, the evidence leaders and the panel here through some of the uh, testimony and through some of the reasoning why he took the controversial decisions. He touched on everything from the Jackie Celebi uh, trial to the infamous special browse mole report um, and, of course, the, the very controversial controversial case and his decision to withdraw those corruption charges against Richard Mbluli. And regarding the Celebi case, essentially he said it wasn't his fault that his statement ended up uh, in Celebi's application for a stay of prosecution. And then regarding the uh, Browse Mole report, he said he was being investigated for uh, his office being the source of the report, but once again, not his fault, he said. And then regarding the Mbluli matter, the withdrawal of charges, uh, Lawrence Mkwebi again saying it's not his fault that there was no direct direct link uh, in the evidence to link Mluli to wrongdoing, essentially saying that Glennis Breitenbach and Jan Ferreira, the prosecutors that were also on the stand here, didn't do their job properly and were not able to establish that direct link. Of course, the other testimony that we heard uh, from Breitenbach, Ferreira and a host of others, including Willi Hofmeyer, points towards a substantial case that the NPA had against uh, Richard Mluli, and they are still maintaining that those charges should not have been dropped. So that was the gist of Lawrence Mkhwebi's testimony. Of course, he didn't undergo any cross-examination. That's because Mkhwebi will be led on his evidence or has been led on his evidence and now they lead Nomkobo Jiba before they start cross-examining either of them. So Jiba is expected to take the stand today actually um, and it will be the first time that she has ever spoken in public about a range of issues. Of course, there's a lot to respond to here because as Willi Hofmeyer said, uh, they are accused of being the reason why the NPA slid into a state of dysfunctionality. That's being contested by the attorneys, but there should be more argument around that in today's hearing. Okay, so Nom Gobojiba today rather than tomorrow. Apologies uh, for that, Govan. And uh, he, she's going to be uh, understand as well. What, what sort of kind of things do we expect uh, the inquiry to focus on with Nom Gobojiba when she takes a stand? Of course, there are a host of uh, allegations against Jiba which came out uh, just as this inquiry started. Chief among them, um, of course, the allegations by Angelo Agrizi at the State Capture Commission that Nomkobo Jiba received a 100,000 rand bribe and also collaborated with the former Correctional Services uh, Commissioner Lyndon Tita and supplied, her with, uh, supplied him with confidential documents. We do understand, Brodan, that um, Nomkobo Jiba intends to deal extensively with the allegations made by Agrizi, and she, she will attempt to disprove that everything that he said. Uh, so basically we've heard from her legal representative that they'll try to deal with that um, immediately and then they'll move on to other matters such as the allegations that she pursued racketeering charges against the former head of the Hawks in KwaZulu-Natal, Johan Boysen. Of course, uh, Jiba pursued those charges um, relating to the Cato Manor Violent Crimes Unit um, and Johan Boysen was on the stand here and he said he believes he was being pushed out for pursuing high-profile investigations. Of course, that was disputed by her attorneys. Then there's the evidence by Willi Hofmeyer. He's pointing towards Jiba as being the reason why uh, high-profile cases were being taken off the roll, in Willi Hofmeyer's words, to please politicians. Those are some of the most serious allegations against her, and those are the ones that will have to be tested um, after evidence has been led. But for most of the day, uh, we're expecting just to hear from the, and then next week, um, or perhaps tomorrow, we may start the cross-examination. Okay, thanks very much. That's Govan Wittles of the Mahoro uh, Inquiry there, and he'll keep us updated.